Welcome to Goobertown Hobbies. My name is Brent, and today we are painting gladiators. Today, I'm painting up a pair of minis with the goal of making them look excellent as they face each other upon the sands of the Colosseum. I want each mini to look great on their own, but I also want them to look like they belong in the arena together. Fierce rivals and worthy opponents. They'll each have a unique paint scheme, but I'm painting them in parallel to get some stylistic symmetry. These minis are from Arena Rex. It's a skirmish game set in a fantastical version of the Roman Colosseum. I played a demo game at Gen Con last year, and I had a lot of fun. The models are incredible. They really scratch an itch that I didn't realize I had. These Arena Rex minis come in a clam pack with a data card, a game token, and a cool bit of cover art. These are resin models, so I took the precaution of a quick wash with dish soap to remove any mold release agent. Then, since I love magnetic painting handles and magnetic storage boxes, I puttied magnets onto their bases. Next, I assembled them with super glue. For Otho Mentellus, I decided to do a bit of sub-assembly and paint the shield separately. These are some seriously sharp looking models. I know a lot of folks hobby entirely within a single brand of minis, Games Workshop for example, but there's a whole world of awesome minis out there to check out. These are the studio models for these characters. Othomentalis and Viatrix. The non-metallic metal in those paint jobs is awesome, but I knew I wanted to go with a more colorful and less technically challenging scheme. My gladiators use more paints and dyes on their gear. They're peacocks, stars of the show. Like the studio models, I'm going to base mine with the sands of the arena, so I threw down some Vallejo earth texture. I primed them black, then I gave them a quick squirt of white ink from above to light up the models. This zenithal priming technique really helps me to see the details of the model as I'm painting. It also provides a little head start on shading and highlighting, especially if I'm careful to use nice, thin layers of paint. If you don't have an airbrush, you can leave this step out, or you can do it quick with a squirt of white spray paint. Alright, it's time to start painting. My goal is to make them unique while also belonging in the arena together. I want cheering fans to be rooting for each of these warriors, and I want the match to be close and exciting. No one knows who will win. I started by laying down two different skin tones. I decided to go with a paler skin tone for Viatrix. I think putting a little more contrast onto her model, combined with the ferocity of her pose, might make her seem like a more deadly opponent. Othomentalis seems to have size and strength going for him, so this should be a good match. I painted the bases very early. Identical basing can really help make the models fit together thematically. I figured that basing choices have a big effect on the ultimate appearance of the model, so it helps to sketch this in early as I'm making color choices. Since I knew what I wanted to do for their bases, might as well get it done. I did really like the sand bases on the studio models, so I did my best to make mine similar. I chose blue for Otho Mentalis. It makes a lot of sense because he has a fish theme on his armor. Also, it's a good color for a sports team, so it's a good color for a gladiator. I decided to start with a turquoise instead of a true blue to make it a bit more fun. For the main color on Viatrix, I was deciding between red and green. Both work for a viper theme, and either would look good locked in combat with a blue warrior. I actually think green might have looked a little bit better than red on this model, but thematically red and blue are classic opponents. Also, I feel like maybe red snakeskin is harder to find than green. I want fans asking, where did she find red snakeskin? That question adds mystery and danger to the character, I think. I kept working the bases with a brown wash. Again, I want to lock in their appearance early to help with the rest of the color choices. After the wash was on, I dry brushed some very pale yellow on as a highlight. Next, I put a black rim on the bases. Some folks save the base rim for the end as a ritualistic finishing touch, but I really wanted to establish the overall look of the models as soon as I could in the process. I kept working the skin tones with washes. Strong Tone from Army Painter for Otho Mentalis, and Reikland Flesh Shade from GW for Viatrix. Next, I got to blocking in some of the other big colors. I used brown for leather and also to undercoat areas that I wanted to be gold. I used black paint to undercoat areas that I wanted to be steel. 
For the metallics, I used Vallejo Model Air Gold and Model Air Steel. Both of these are quite thin out of the bottle, but with the right undercoating they look pretty good after a single coat. I ended up using a fair bit of gold. I think a lot of gold makes sense for veterans of the arena fighting in the Primus. Primus is a word that I picked up from the star's show Spartacus. It's a thoroughly entertaining show about Roman gladiators. If you're over 18 and you haven't seen Spartacus Blood and Sand, go ahead and give yourself a treat. Make sure to watch at least three episodes though. Don't just watch the pilot and complain to me that the show is terrible. You gotta really get in there. You can come back and thank me when you finish season one. Moving on, I added some leather straps where appropriate with a couple different shades of medium dark brown. Then, in a few places, I added a bit of beige cloth. If you can't tell, I'm really enjoying painting these up. Gladiators are just so rich for works of art. Strength, skill, danger, egos. These minis can be infused with so much character. These two are clearly champions. Their gear shows wealth and success, and their poses show experience and flair. This is fun. Otho Bentelis' shield was a nice project. I started painting it up separately. Once he and his shields both had a base coat, I glued them together. I chose a different shade of blue for the paint on the shield than for his skirt and his helmet plume. It makes sense that the paint on his armor would be different from the dye that went into the feathers and into the cloth. I like to imagine that Mentelos commissioned this gear, and they came back in a couple of different shades of blue, and that this giant of a man just got really angry and yelled at the contractor, threatened not to pay, all that good stuff. So I like the idea of using a couple different shades of blue, but I am planning on shading and highlighting them to bring them closer together than they are right now. The skirt and feathers on the plume got a blue tone wash, similar to the base color blue on the shield. Then, on the shield, I started out with some edge highlighting using a happy medium blue. This improves things, but I decided I needed to take the plunge and try to make a sweet color transition on the surface of the shield. It's just too big of a piece on this model to be a flat color. Maybe I should have started this transition earlier with an airbrush or wet blending. Oh well, I can do it now with a bit of layering. As a backup plan, I figured if I wasn't able to do the layering and the transition as well as I wanted to, I could just sponge on a bunch of weathering and battle damage to disguise any shortcomings in the blend. For layering, I used many layers of thinned down blue paint. I put these generally on the top half of the shield, especially in that top left hand corner. I used thin layers of a medium blue and thin layers of a very light blue. By giving each thin layer a slightly different shape and having them overlap a little bit differently for each one, it became difficult to see the border of any single layer, and the overall effect was pretty decent. I'm always growing and learning as a painter, and I really am happy with how decent this shield turned out. This just hammers on the lesson that it's always worthwhile to play around with new techniques and give things a shot, and just see how it goes. Back to Viatrix. Let's take stock and see what's next. Wait, she's missing a bit. She lost a feather. I have no idea what happened to it or where it went. So I made a new one with green stuff. What I came up with is more of a sliver of green stuff with a few fingerprint ridges than a tiny feather, but it's about the same size and it worked surprisingly well as a replacement. For her snakeskin, I had washed the red scales with null oil from GW. I figured that the scale texture would allow for a really effective wash and that I could then dry brush up the scales to a nice bright highlight. As it turns out, the texture detail in those scales is so fine that the dry brushing didn't really catch, and the scales stayed pretty dark and pretty bland. That won't do. I want fun highlights on these models. I ended up experimenting with stippling. This is not a technique that I've used before, but that's part of the fun of this hobby. For these one-off models, there's really nothing to stress out about. Just try out some ideas until you find something that you're happy with. Keep painting over bits you don't like until you find something that works. By dotting on lighter reds up to a mid-orange, I ended up with some decent highlights on the snakeskin. Let's move on. I washed the gold bits with brown wash, and I washed the steel bits with black wash, and then afterwards I did just a little bit of highlighting with the original metallic colors. On Otho's leather armor, I spiced it up with a dark wash, 
then I did a bit of highlighting with lighter browns. In the end, I decided that my edge highlighting was a bit too aggressive, so I toned it back down with a wash of strong tone, and I'm happy with where that ended up. For improving the skin tones a bit, I took out my wet palette and mixed up a smorgasbord of flesh colors. I used these to add some subtle highlights on the skin and to cover up some weird staining from the washes that I had used. I also went in and sketched on some scars for Otho Mentalis. Alright, we're getting really close now. I added a few tasteful splatters of old blood to the arena sand, some nice dark stains sanctifying the ground that these warriors are fighting on. I'm getting pretty close to calling these done. Wait, where did her feather go? It's the other feather this time. Alright, that's okay, you can't get me down today, feather. This time, I made a whole pile of replacement feathers. After cleaning up a few last details, I'm ready to call this pair done. I bought a handful of these Arena Rex minis, but I chose to paint these two first because their poses complement each other. Beatrix is attacking and Othomentullus is defending. The mismatch of a lithe and vicious warrior woman with a scarred giant of a man is a fight that would absolutely bring people to the arena. Despite their differences, the quality of their gear is similar. They both have well-made swords and shields, and they have some serious customization. Beatrix has a snake theme on her shield and is wearing scales. Othomentullus has a pretty intense fish theme going on with his armor. Both of them are veterans of the arena who are displaying a bit of wealth and style. They're both cocky and used to winning. Fans are cheering for each of them, yet only one will emerge victorious. Who will it be? I still have some unpainted Arena Rex minis. Who should I paint next? Which pair should fight each other in the arena? Theophania and Urbicus? Hermes and Theophania? Hermes and Amelia? What does the crowd desire? Let me know, what does the crowd desire? Well, there we go. I think this was a great little project. I really like how each of these minis turned out, and I really love how they look facing off against each other. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do me a favor. Like, subscribe, comment, tell a friend, ring the bell, share. All of that stuff really does help the channel, and it really does help me to keep making better and better videos. So yeah, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you again next time.